Hey guys, in this video, we'll be covering the Payments tab. Now once you click on this, the first thing you'll see is the Invoices section. But before we jump into that, I want to draw your attention to a couple of key things that are important. First is Integrations, which you can find on the top right side of your screen. Once you click on that, it'll show you a list of payment processors. Now, it does include a few popular ones like Stripe, PayPal, and Authorize.net. So just make sure that you connect the one that you use for your business. In this example, I have used Stripe. So once that's connected, then we'll be able to use all the other options that are made available to us over here. Now we do have another settings tab. So there are a couple of key settings here. The first one is receipts. Now, if you want to enable automatic sales receipts for any kind of payments, you can. And you can also decide on the format. You can customize the title and add a prefix so that any time a customer receives a receipt, it will have this prefix and then the start number. So feel free to do that. And you can also customize the email template. So if you do a default one, of course it will come with the system generated parameters. But if you create a customized template under marketing and email templates, you can actually switch that out here. And once you hit save, you will receive customized receipts with your own templates. Then we do have the taxes option here. So you can click on add tax here, add the name of the tax, decide the percentage, add in the description, and then also add your tax ID number. So if you want to add taxes to any kind of payments that you take from your customers, you can add the taxes here. Now that we have gone over settings and integrations, I want to go to the next important tab that we have, which is products. So before we use the invoices and proposals and estimates, we have to make sure that we have products inside our system so that we can add it into our invoices, proposals, and anything of those sorts. So you can create products, but if you have Stripe connected, you have a couple of options. One is where you can create a product by clicking here, and then you can also import any existing products from Stripe if you need to. In order to create a new product, you will just click on this button right here and then add in a name, let's say marketing services or something like that. You can also add in the description, then also add a logo to make it more customized. And then we have to select a product type, which is, is it a service or is it a physical good? So in this case, I'm just gonna choose service right here. And then one of the key elements here is what type of product will it be? Is it a one-time product for let's say $100 or something? Or is it going to be a recurring fee which will be charged to the customer? So let's say it's a $1,000 recurring fee for a service. You can also define the billing period. And if you want to give away a trial for let's say 10 days or something, you can also do so, which is really powerful. And then you can also add the number of payments that you would like to have in this. So let's say it's a six month service. You can add the number of payments. And then if you also want to charge a setup fee on top of the recurring fee that you have, you can add that here. Now, once you're happy with all this, just click on save here and it will create a product that you can start using in your invoices, products, landing pages, websites, and all that stuff. Now that we have a few products here, let's head over to the invoice section by clicking on all invoices. So this is a kind of dashboard for invoices where you can track the status of different invoices that you've sent and you can create new invoices here as well. Now, if you want to create an invoice, you can click on the new button here and it allows you to choose between two kinds of invoices. So this is a one-time invoice that you can use as well as a new recurring template. Let's say if you want to charge somebody for a subscription model, you can choose a recurring template. Now, before we select any of these options, if I head over to invoices, and go to templates. This is where you can create templates for any kind of invoice that you will create in the future. So as you can see, I've created an invoice here. If I open that right now, you can see that it has a product and you can also add products here. Let's say this is the product that I wanna charge for. It also has a price built in, which can be created under products in the payments tab. And then you can also add some more text if you'd like to. Once you are satisfied, just hit save and then you can use this template. So you can either use it from here, or if I go back here and click on the three dots next to this template, and then you would select use one time or use recurring. So there's only two kinds of invoices right now. One time basically allows you to bill somebody one time. And for the recurring invoice, of course, you can set up a frequency. So let's say I'm ready to send an invoice to somebody. I will add a contact under bill to. So this is where I will select a contact. 
Once that's done, I'll just make sure that I have all the items I need here. If you need to add some more, you can add more items here. Once you are satisfied with all this, you can rename the invoice to anything you like. So I'll rename it to the customer's name dash invoice. Then you can either save it or you can send it as well. So if I send it, it will give you a couple of options. So you can either send the invoice via both email and text, or you can just choose one of these. And we also have the option to choose if the payment mode is test or live. So let's say you're only testing this for yourself. You can just keep it set to test and then send the invoice so that you can try it out from your side to see if it's working. But of course, if you're sending it to an actual customer, just make sure that it is live before you hit send invoice. Once you have sent the invoice, it will start appearing up here so you can see the status. And once the customer pays, it will be marked as paid. Then the next option we have is proposals and estimates. Now this also has a templates option. So if you want to create some pre-made templates that can be helpful later on, you can create new templates here. And once you click here, so this is the new template. If you click on this plus icon here, it will allow you to add some elements. So I can add in, let's say, a logo here if I need to. You can click on this media icon here and upload your logo. Now because my logo is white and I prefer to have like a dark lit page, what I can do is click on these three dots here, then click on page properties, and then I can customize the color of this template. Let's go with the black one right here. And then the next item I want to add is the most important one which is the product list. So if I drag that here, it will add a space for a product list where I can add different products. And then I can also customize the color of this whole thing. And then I have to add items here. So I'm gonna add the product here and keep the same price. Next, you can add some text at the bottom if you need to. Something like looking forward to hearing from you or anything you like. And then you can rename it to anything that makes sense for your proposals and estimates template. I'm just going to type that here and then hit save. Now you can see that the template is created here, which is awesome. Now if I go to all proposals and estimates, this is where you can see all the proposals and estimates that you've sent. You can also see we have a settings icon here. So if I click on that, you will see that you can customize the customer notifications as well as choose an email template. When you send out a proposal or an estimate, it will go out as an email. So you can also choose a default or customized template for your proposals and estimates. That way it looks more branded. As you can see, I created a custom one here, so I've chosen that. If you need to create one, you can go to marketing and then create some email templates for your proposals and estimates as well. And in a similar way, when the document is signed, you can also choose a customized template for that so things are branded to your site. Once you're happy with the settings, hit save, and that's it. There are also team notifications where you can also notify the users, and you can customize the email templates for that too. Now, if I head back to all proposals and estimates, if you want to use your template when you are sending out any new proposals or estimates, all you'll have to do is head over to templates. This was the template we created. We'll click on the three dots here, then click on use template, and then we'll be able to use it and send it to any customer or prospect as we like. So the next option we have is the Orders tab, where you can track all the payments that have been made for your product, whether they're coming from the landing page or your websites or anything of those sorts. You just need to make sure that you have products here and that they're placed somewhere on the website or landing pages. So whenever somebody places an order for that, you will be able to see that here. And then we have subscriptions, of course. If you have some subscriptions via order forms in your landing pages or websites, if somebody pays through that, you will be able to track that here as well. And then we have transactions. So under transactions, anytime you send an invoice, somebody pays, or you use the fast payment link options under conversations, which is the option where you send a quick link for a payment. When somebody pays, it'll come under transactions. You can also see the status for whether it's pending, paid, or not. So the last option we have is coupons. Coupons are really helpful because they allow you to increase conversions by allowing you to give discounts to customers. Maybe they're special customers, or you are running an offer, or maybe a promo code that you want people to utilize to boost your conversions. Now, in order to create a coupon, you have to name it first. So you can say something like Christmas discount and then add a coupon code. So this is the code that they'll be using. I'm going to add CD20 just so we can say, you know, Christmas discount for 20%. Then you can select the coupon type. 
is it going to be a percentage discount or a fixed one? So let's go with percentage for now, and I'm going to enter 20%. Next, we have a required field here, which is the start date on how soon do you want people to use it. So I'm going to start it on this date. And then you can also choose a start time and end time and end date as well, if you need to. Now, the last couple of options we have is if you want to limit it for the number of times this coupon can be used. Let's say you only want it to be used for the first 50 people so that it can only be used 50 times. And then you can also limit it to selected products. So let's say you don't want to give this coupon or percentage off on all the products. You can select a customized product here so that it is only applicable to that. Now, once you're happy with all these settings, just hit Create, and then you are done creating a coupon. Alright, so that was all about the Payments tab. I hope you found this video valuable and thank you for watching.